today in 40 seconds of logos. And they are attempting to set a record by making Buffalo's largest cookie. Buffalo's largest cookie? Not the country's? Not the world's? Buffalo's largest cookie? The Kowalski's sin is their complete lack of ambition. Also, does Buffalo have its own record book for this sh After losing four straight Super Bowls, was the town like, f*** all this losing, we're making our own record book. And now Frank down the street is like, I made a triple decker PB and J, can I get in the book? Yeah, Frank, congrats on your record. Interesting that they keep the bagels covered to store them longer, but every other type of they make is just out here on the shelf. Fair game for flies, degrading by the minute. There's no way this cookie isn't just raw dough in the middle with this kind of depth and those giant pools of chocolate or third degree burns waiting to happen. This thing is an health code violation, it's a death trap sitting on the floor to scrapbook on a tiny table like this with a beverage and candles. This is a recipe for ruined or lost pictures, back problems, and that pins and needles thing where your legs feel like they are on fire and also being sliced by razor blades at the same time. Let's watch it one more time. Oh, no. Just once more. No. Please. No. This guy who doesn't understand the word no is going to be given the powers of God. Oh, no. Brace the dog! Yelling for someone else to solve the immediate problem that you were closer to. B-E-A beautiful. Jim carrying your dialogue just because Jim Carrey is in the film. Well, they need my blood. I have a very rare blood type. I'm AB positive. While it is fairly rare, AB positive is literally the least needed type of blood for donation, because not only are the only people that can use it other AB positive people, but other AB positive people can use every single other blood type. Wow, this is some of the most obviously staged traffic I've ever seen. It's a nice story, Bruce, but we're gonna go with Evan's piece. A local news organization that pays to send a reporter, producer, and camera person out to a story and have someone fully edit the piece when they might not even air it. Wait, was that just a plain piece of bologna and cheese between two slices of bread? No ketchup or anything? This just in, your sandwich sucks. Couldn't you have paid Jim Carrey a little less money and actually filmed this at Niagara Falls? It's so fake looking, the parting of the tomato soup later in the movie looks more realistic than this. Our beloved Pete Feynman is retiring, and we could think of no one better than our very own Evan Baxter. Movie wants us to believe that this would be a normal way for Bruce to get sucker punched about not getting this job, but there is zero chance this happens without a coordinated effort to hurt him as badly as possible. Bruce should just leave town immediately because every single person he works with is an asshole who hates him and there is no other explanation for this absolute troll job going down like this. What's going on? Oh, shut up, Jack. You knowingly sent Bruce out on an assignment without telling him that Evan was getting the job and put the announcement right before his piece. The idea that Jack is a good guy in this movie is a Philip Baker Hall of Lies. Why did you throw the blue heart of the ocean jewel over the railing of the Titanic? Did you feel bad at all letting Leo DiCaprio drown while you were safe floating on the big door? Could you have taken turns? Bruce would be the almightiest at CinemaSins. Why do you think I didn't get the anchor job? Hey man, I don't want any problems. I don't want... Is it my hair, Bill? Honestly, this broadcast should have already been cut once it was clear Bruce was going to rant about not getting the anchor job. So everything that comes after this is on Inspector Bookman back in the production office for letting this go on any further. I'm Bruce Nolan for Eyewitness News. Back to you, f***ers. In the real world, this man transitions the viral fame he's sure to get into a talking head slot on one of the major news channels complaining about cancel culture while making six-figure appearance fees. In this movie, he transitions it into a chance to be God. And I'm not sure which is more ridiculous. Hey, we got your things. Seriously, these five characters were named Hood 1 through Hood 5 in the script. It's crazy how racially unaware we were in the 60s. I really wish he'd stop trying to make B-E-A beautiful a thing. This is all because of that alrighty then bullshit being so popular. You know that everything happens for a reason. That's just something indoctrinated people say. God has taken my bird in my bush. Blaming God for your personal grooming habits. God is a mean kid sitting on an anthill with a magnifying glass and I'm the ant. Kinda harsh until you read the Old Testament. I'm not okay with a mediocre apartment. Hold up, this apartment is f***ing rat. I'm not okay with a mediocre life! Okay, so here's where he went too far, I think we can all agree. But sending the photo box flying across the room is legit an early warning sign of an abusive relationship. So I'm sinning this movie for having him do this to further underscore the importance of the unfinished photo album while not even remotely acknowledging that this is abuser behavior. Smite me, almighty oh, smiter! Is Jim Carrey comically brilliant or gratuitously overacting? Who can know the answer to this mystery? This guy couldn't live in a more obvious studio backlot if a giant WB water tower was in the background. Oh. 
What is that? What is that? The puddle was pretty obvious, and Bruce just needs to look where he's going, which might be part of the overall theme of the movie. Or not. Having God in any incarnation, in any situation, for any reason whatsoever, wear a f***ing Yankees hat. People underestimate the benefit of good old manual labor. Confusing the labor itself as the reward instead of the purpose behind it. Bruce goes flying again because of this drawer. Are we sure God isn't a sadist? Three, two, four, nine, six, eight. One. Well, apparently we know where God stands on the is the thumb a finger question. I mean, he's wrong, but whatever. The fact that this old man sees this shit and still stays quiet is kind of a big deal because Bruce will go on to reap all kinds of fame and the dude from up here has firsthand knowledge that Bruce has superpowers. Excuse me, I need a spoon. Funny? Yes, but shouldn't it have just appeared in his hand? I think the real power making this happen is from the screenwriter. Look, I'm just trying to get the lay of the promised land here. Do some powers require more focus from God? Do some powers result in more peripheral grandeur, like doors opening and wind blowing things around? Why is the parting of the red soup any more majestic than the telekinesising of the sugar earlier? In order to account for the parting of the soup, the amount of CGI soup in this bowl is greatly reduced. And all they had to do to avoid this is not fill the bowl so goddamn full in the first place. Insinuating that you wouldn't no, you've walked out onto the water until a boat goes by. It's almost like these movies think because we can't see it, we believe the characters can't see it either. No one else sees this. Bruce immediately uses his powers to destroy public property, Marilyn Monroe a woman without consent, and steal clothing. I'm beginning to think he might just be an asshole. Yo, brethren, what up with thee? That's Baptist. <laughs> Both he and the monkey survived this. Twice. Also, I'm going to send the actual god in this movie here as well for letting Bruce do all this vigilante sh**. I am Bruce Almighty! Roll credits. That moon is way too big. Destroying an entire star system so you can get laid. Not only does he use his god powers to seduce his girlfriend and literally give her a long distance orgasm, but he does it to avoid having to finish their argument from last night. It's at about right now that the sexing soundtrack changes from Barry White to Fatboy Slim. Do I really have to further explain why I'm adding us in here? There's no way this dog is peeing in this toilet from this position. Can't pee downward like a human man, so that stream was pointed right at the back of the toilet seat or drenching his own front legs. Yep, he used god powers to make his girl's boobs bigger. I'm honestly not sure he's going to use the god powers for any good reason this whole film. But I'll keep pointing out all the selfish and sinful ones along the way. Whoa, nice car, man. Except those noisy skateboard punks saw the beat up car just a few seconds ago. Did they see the car change? Did he erase their memory? All this horsepower and no room to gallop. You live in Buffalo. I guess every dog has his day. And every day has its way of being forgotten. Mom, it's my birthday. <laughs> Seems to be in tune. Let's do this. Taking the long route to spitting in someone's eye. As you can see behind us, the body is being carefully exhumed. That body is still 92% covered by dirt. How the f did you determine it was Jimmy Hoffa? The body was found buried with a birth certificate and complete set of dental records. And you didn't think that sh was suspicious and instead of checking the DNA, you just declared it f***ing Hoffa? How did the dental records help when his face is still covered by dirt? Moments later, he busted a local news camera crew with 220 pounds of marijuana. Someday, not too far down the road, this moment will make as much sense as kids in a movie from the 50s being arrested for playing a pinball machine. We want you back, Bruce. We decided that you lucking into a big story is a clear indication that your mental instability and the giant FCC fines you caused are no longer important. This guy back here is absolutely grabbing the f out of his nuts right now. Why is he here? Why doesn't he shuffle off camera or squat and crawl? Bruce Nolan is rapidly becoming known as... I would think Mr. Convenient would be more appropriate. Or Mr. In the Right Place at the Right Time. Or Mr. He Clearly Did a Voodoo Curse or Deal with the Devil. There's no way the public would just keep accepting that this is him being a scoop master. This doesn't even make any sense. There's not even any incentive for Bruce to God teach the dog to hold the paper, let alone read it. Okay, look, they would quarantine this meteor crater immediately, not let all the chefs from the motherfucking nearby chili cook off into the crater for a photo op that can only happen via helicopter. God fucking damn. And he told me to prepare for the most memorable night of our entire lives. First of all, men should never say this to their partners. It is impossible to live up to. Second of all, I witnessed most of the sex you guys had a few nights back, and that seemed like it would be more memorable than even getting proposed to. It's not clear that Evan Baxter ever did anything wrong to Bruce, other than some office banter. He merely got the job Bruce wanted. So now that Bruce is God, he'll use those powers to utterly humiliate a coworker he probably wrongly labeled as a foe. But don't worry, kids. In the end, he does a single sacrificial thing, and that redeems all this selfish bullshit. 
apparently. Why aren't any of the production employees asking why Bruce Nolan is here in the booth, leaning against the wall and acting f***ing weird? So much for the no interfering with someone's free will rule. They cut away seconds after Bruce said a swear on the Maid of the Mist, but they let Evan speak in tongues for more than half a minute and take no action. Grace. Yes. Grace. Yes. I got anchor. This movie's idea of misunderstanding is to have the person act exactly as if they are doing the thing the other person thinks they are doing, even though it is in no way related to the thing they are actually doing. This fake out proposal is all of the contrived bullshit in a bag of cow chips. Is this heaven? No, oh, this is Mount Everest. This cannot be the top of Mount Everest because I cannot see the colorful remnants of the living who got here and planted flags or the dead who died near the top only to become stairs. You should flip on the Discovery Channel from time to time. Max. I know. Prayer post-its. This dude learns the lesson about the limits of physical media storage, but then immediately chooses a different form of physical media storage that has even less ability to be tracked and monitored. But all the post-its in the world can't cover up the fact that there are seven lit lamps in this one shot. Yo! <laughs> Even when this movie came out, Yahoo was a dinosaur. But they were so stuck on that Yahweh joke riffing on the Yahoo jingle, they kept a dated joke out of spite. So he's got 1.5 million unread prayers, and that shit has to still just be upper New York, yeah? Of course, the Christians I see on TV the most don't seem like the kind to do much praying. Hmm. Send it anyway! Bruce uses the power of God to get fresh coffee direct from Juan Valdez instead of just answering some of the prayers he's been emailed. Bruce continues to be a terrible person. Ooh, super speed flashing email answering scene. This is where I earn my keep, kids. Frame by frame button, don't let me down. Everything starts off okay with a prayer from Tom Cassidy about needing rain, and then need rain gets marked as yes on the answer line. But the next one is about a lost cat, which appears to have already been answered yes at the top of the screen. We then get Harold O'Brien's more money request, which makes it clear we are now working our way down the list from the top, even though Bruce is still marking the emails further down. This continues through make me smarter, make me thinner, friends at school, and English test. But then we start the entire cycle over with the need rain, lost cat, and so on and so forth. And holy sh**, did I just completely ruin this movie for you? You're welcome. Bruce is so lazy, he replies yes to all his emails just so he can stop having to deal with emails. And while this is part of his being God is hard journey, this is still some f***ing bullshit that deserves punishment. Bruce shows up to the party literally turning water into wine and still no one objects or says, what the hell? I like the sabers, coach prays a lot. How would you know? See, he's leaning on a golden calf. This is exactly the kind of subtle biblical illusion that resulted in millions who saw this denouncing their own greed for a life of simplicity, leading to the overwhelming peace and goodwill we see around us through the world and on the internet today. Here's the dumbest sh ever. He calls her and leaves a message asking her to come to the party. Then he uses his god powers to get the dog to persuade her. But then he, what? Forgets he's God and decides to let Susan Ortega eat his face like he doesn't know his girlfriend is coming here soon? You want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around and pull it down. Explaining your references. No wonder you stayed single! Bruce yells this at God as though relationships are hard, am I right? When he was literally just caught kissing another woman by his live-in girlfriend. An unusually high number of lottery winners has New York officials concerned. There's forced news position and then there's pretend everyone at a fancy party had a TV on and tuned into the evening news forced news position. Also, multiple lottery winners is the main problem from answering yes to everyone's prayers. I saw Wonder Woman 1984, I know it gets much worse than that. How do you make somebody love you without affecting free will? You f***ing don't. Only a selfish person would even ask this question. She goes out jogging, leaving her sister's house, and finds that Bruce has carved messages in the graffiti trees to get her to come back to him. And that is absolutely psychotic behavior, stalker behavior. Uh, and the fact that she takes him back at about 23 minutes of movie time is a crime. Hi. Can I get a small coffee to go? Who goes to a trolley car diner for a small coffee? You work at a preschool or elementary school, and that place definitely has coffee. Kids. So he shows up at her work in the middle of her doing her job, which is exactly what Ross did, FYI, and hopes he can just use words to get her back. And even if you want to go the use words only option, showing up unannounced at your ex's job is a huge red flag that you are in fact a selfish f***ing prickly dickheaded sh heel. Would it help if I just said that I was a complete ass? No, in fact, that's kind of the whole problem here. You are a complete ass. Like, the movie's going to try and change my view of you here in a second, but I'm afraid your character is just like the Twinkies two-for-one coupon I just found in my wallet. Probably a bad idea in the first place, and no longer redeemable. Love me. Love me. Love me. Love me!
Elon Musk. The scene nearly turned violent. The scene nearly turned violent after nearly everyone won the lottery all at once, and that violence would have been on the real god, not Bruce. Just want to make sure we keep our eye on the true culprit. Doomsday prophesy? Did someone pray for a terrible graphics artist? Excuse me, I will prophesy that no one was able to prophesy the spelling error. Because the Sabres have won their first championship in 22 years! The Sabres have actually never won the Stanley Cup. I have no idea what this movie is smoking here. For something with so much actual buffalo sh baked in, it's odd this line went unchecked. Oh no! See, he's almost crushed by his own giant ego. This is exactly the kind of subtle metaphorical message that has resulted in millions who saw this denouncing their own narcissism for a life of empathy, leading to the overwhelming peace and goodwill we see around us through the world and on the internet today. Not as easy as it looks, is it, son? This God business. Movie tries to make me feel sorry for God. I get that mopping the floor is metaphorical for cleaning up the mess on Earth, at least in Buffalo, but this is a vacant floor. How dirty could that have gotten in a single week with no one occupying it? Alrighty then. I'd give all the sins back if Morgan Freeman turned around and spoke the rest of this scene with his butt. That's everybody's problem. You keep looking up. What the hell does that mean? God's all like, don't ask me, I just work here. Here we finally see, finally, a side of Bruce that considers other people. And he's looking at the photos. And then he reverts right back to selfish Bruce by finishing this photo album without Grace's input. The point wasn't the album, you dick. It was doing it together, reliving the occasions and vacations that the photos commemorate. You have missed the entire point. Unfortunately, so is the movie. So this will work and Grace will love it. Bruce giveth and Bruce take it away. Wait, so instead of answering each prayer or just yes to alling his way through it, he unplugs the prayer machine? And that's a good thing? So now all the prayers go out and no one ever reads them at all, let alone responds to them? That sounds a lot like real life, but I'm not sure this movie realizes it's going full atheist here. Lower and debase myself for the amusement of total strangers? Jim Carrey's actual inner monologue somehow makes it into the script. Okay, Sammy, let's do it right, like all the other dogs. It's odd that he's trying to teach his dog to pee on one of the only trees on this block. Like, take your dog to a dog park, man. This plot of grass is so small. Do you even have any idea how fast your f***ing dog will fill this area with foul-smelling, stinking dog waste? This is full. You did all this? A scrapbook would totally make up for the psychological abuse you put my sister through. I'll put in a good word. Here the movie will have the stocky ex-boyfriend with god powers literally spy on her outside her bedroom as she cries praying to the real god that she doesn't want to hurt anymore. That it's going to help Bruce learn and grow, but the invasion of privacy here is unforgivable. gibbable you manipulative douchebag motherfuckers. I want you to decide what's right for me. Weren't you listening earlier, Bruce? God said that our problem was looking up to him too much. What's the deal with a sudden change in message here? Because I thought it was solve your own sh** because I'm outie, thus saith the Lord. Grace. Grace. You want it back? No. I want her to be happy. This here is the only measure of growth this dickhead makes the entire movie. I actually do believe he has put Grace's happiness above his own, but I also believe his own happiness is still well above all non-Grace humans that exist on the planet. I want her to find someone who will treat her with all the love she deserved from me. And because this movie can't just leave it on this pretty powerful idea, that person will end up being you anyway for some bullshit reason. I get that she might come visit him, or even be upset at his condition, but she's basically taking him back because she has sads about how he got hit by a car. None of her issues with him have been resolved. Here is a syringe cookie that definitely looks like a penis. I myself will have given blood twice this week. No reputable blood drive would have taken your blood twice in a week. The standard waiting time between blood donations is 12 weeks at the least. Now I'm wondering if this whole story was made up. Was this supposed to be a twist ending? It never looked like Morgan Freeman, so we weren't meant to guess it. And the CGI transformation is awful, but still is probably why we had to have green screen Niagara Falls scenes. Eroding! 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 Jazz, Evan. You like jazz? I'm Rick Tamlin. People seem to like me because I am polite and I'm rarely late. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. The only one around here not doing his job is you! Oh, don't grovel. One thing I can't stand is people groveling. 555-0123. Hello, Sydney. Who are you? I'm Batman. There is a seam here. Or a hollow spot. Oh, yeah. Sam? 
Am I getting through to you? Go f yourself, San Diego. Groundbreaking ceremony earlier today when an angry shirtless lady treated attendees to quite the show. Clap on! Hercules, Hercules, Hercules! What?